What's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I just wanted to come and run my mouth and talk about my brothers. Brothers. My brothers. And my Claudia Jordan voice. All right, so let's get into this, <laughs> this mess. Jonathan Majors. Y'all knew where I was going with that. Jonathan Majors' attorney uh, provides alleged text messages of victim taking accountability for a recent incident. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to read this to y'all. I'll, I'll post it, too. Um, I mean, there's really no need for me to post it because y'all can't see it. Y'all not going to be able to see it on my screen. Um, I'm going to read it. And if you want to try and read it yourself, because it's pretty, the, it's pretty small, I'll post the link in the description box. All right. So this is according to The Shade Room. Um, Jonathan Major's legal team. Um, has proclaimed his innocence since his arrest last week for the A word. Now it looks like his attorney has reportedly provided some receipts to show uh, he is not at fault for the incident. Um, in alleged text messages provided to TMZ, the victim mentions uh, that she is at fault for the incident and apologizes to Jonathan and claims that the incident was not an attack and that the authorities did not have her blessing on uh, any of the charges placed. Uh, Jonathan's attorney, prior, prior, I can't pronounce the name, reportedly told the outlet that the alleged, the alleged messages were sent hours after Jonathan's arrest and they have been turned over to law enforcement. Um, as previously reported, Jonathan's attorney is expecting the charges against him to be dropped. Now, this is what the text um, message, the alleged, alleged text messages say. Um, it starts out saying there's no note. Hold up. Let me save this. Okay. Cause girl, I'm gonna have to make this bigger, honey. You know, we're getting old. Okay. There's no note. Just knowing what happened. Um, and then it says, did you leave the keys? Goodbye. And they, uh, I guess they, uh, it scraped out the name. All right, so this is what she says. Please allege, this is allegedly, okay? Please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I'm so angry that they did and I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. I only just got out, got out of hospital. Just call me when you're out. I love you. Um, then the next uh, message is, they just called again to check on me and I reiterated how this was not an attack and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. Um, I read the paper they gave me about strangulation and I said point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. Um, the judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you have the best team and there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can, can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior. Out of care, she promised all will be relayed. Now, I don't know. Y'all could take with that as you as you will. You know, from what y'all what y'all what y'all been saying. Not y'all, but what some people have been saying, girl, I guess this is what happens when you deal with white girls. If you deal with the black girls, you can get away with choking them. They ain't going to do nothing. That's pretty much what they've been saying. I mean, ain't that what Claudia said last night? Okay, girl. Um, it is what it is, you know? Um, it sounds like to me, uh, based off of the messages that I just read, it sounds like um, something happened. Something happened, 
And it sounds like also that she is, again, um, I, I don't know why people act like, okay, they don't know how this works. Usually victims of DV, they they tend to forgive. That's not a that's not an opinion. That's facts. Okay, they tend to forgive their violator. So I don't know why we act like just because someone recants or says it didn't happen, girl. We literally just saw somebody's son. What's his name? Zach Stacy. What's his name? Zach Stacy, who was slinging his baby mama around a room. We saw we saw the footage and she still came out defending him. Talking about he shouldn't be in jail. And he was beating up. He was beating up. Almost cursed. In front of there, I think they had I think they have a five month. I think at the time the, the child was five months. I, I don't I can't remember. He did all of that in front of their child. Honey, y'all go out there, y'all, y'all go out there, y'all go, y'all do what y'all do what y'all do. Put y'all capes on and go protect Jonathan. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to the next thing. Um Black China says she lost 10 pounds. <laughs> Black China says she lost 10 pounds after removing silicone from her butt. Um, during a recent interview, Black China, who would like to, well, uh, what, <laughs> girl, you know, you know what, I'm gonna say this much about the Jasmine brand. Jasmine brand, y'all low-key be messy, too. Like, I mean, girl, we all messy, but Jasmine brand, y'all low, I'm, I'm gonna get into y'all in a little bit. So, Angela, <laughs> okay, during a recent, and this is what they wrote, though. During a recent interview, Black China, who would like to be now addressed by who would like to now be addressed by her real name, Angela White. So if you know that that's what she wants, then why just not call the girl Angela White? Um, spoke out after making life changing decisions to her body, which included her recent butt reduction. The model admitted she altered her body numerous times in the past. Angela shared they put Black China. They still call the girl Black China, but I'm gonna call her Angela. Um, Angela shared, this is my fifth boob job. I've had liposuction three times. I've had fillers. I've had a butt aug uh, augmentation. Um, the reality star's previous butt augmentation uh, drew concern. As previously reported, um, March the 13th, Angela took to Instagram, uh, what they call her Angela now. Angela took to Instagram to share their plastic, to share the plastic surgery reversal and the procedure she made when she was, a when she was 19 years old. Ooh, girl, that's, that's so young to start having plastic surgery. Y'all do know for men and for women, like, but just, I just, you know, like, we still probably in that awkward phase, even as 19. Some of y'all was bad. I mean, some of y'all was, you know, very bad at 19 and attractive and all that stuff. But girl, for some people, girl, you really don't even come to, come into your, come into form. Girl, you don't even come into form until like probably your mid-20s. Y'all start getting all this work done when you're a teenager, honey. Um, the 34 year old said, this is a regular person that's doing it. So they get, they, uh, so they get whatever it is, uh, it is substance that they're doing and giving it to you. They're not going to tell you, Hey, you could possibly die. My rear end, um, would get super inflamed and it would get really, really hard and like really hot. It was very scary. God, I know somebody. Um, I know a guy who got his butt done. He can't even sleep on his back. He 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 got to sleep on his stomach or his side because he said when he sleep on his back it hurt. Girl, I said uh uh child. Um, Beverly Hills cosmetic surgeon da uh, Dr. David Matlock spent eight hours rem removing the silicone. From Angela's rear end, girl. Um, the physical dangers of getting legal fillers are many. Um, according to Angela's, according to Angela, 1,250 cc's were removed from her butt, which allowed her to drop 10 pounds. Bitch. 
Girl, can you imagine having, girl, can you imagine, girl, having 10 pounds in your ass? Where you would get you get something removed and you you just automatically lose ten pounds, girl. Um, I, mean, I guess it's, I guess that might be the same thing as like somebody getting a breast reduction, where they I'm sure they probably drop some pounds. Because that mean you went and got I don't know, child. Um, shout out to Angela, girl. Shout out to Angela, girl. She's on a. A life-changing journey right now. I'm not mad at it um, because at one point Miss Thing was looking a mess out in these streets. Girl, I'm glad whatever she's going through. I'm glad she's going through it because again, Miss Thing was looking a mess. Girl, I will see that girl spazzing out at the airport. <laughs> girl, just a fool. So shout out to Angela. Um, daily broadcast of the Breakfast Club morning to start airing on BET. Girl, shout out to uh, do y'all still do y'all do y'all watch the Breakfast Club? I, I don't watch the Breakfast Club. Like I used to watch it, well, listen to it like on YouTube. Um, but they all kind of started getting on my nerves. Um, and then the only time I really kind of listen to it now is if I see something in the blogs and they're playing a clip from the Breakfast Club. But I really don't listen to the Breakfast Club like that. Um, the Breakfast Club radio show is heading to BET. The cable outlet owned by Paramount Global has joined forces with iHeartMedia to broadcast a daily version of the syndicated radio show hosted by Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy, starting from April the se- wait starting from April the seventeenth. Uh, BET will air a one-hour episode of the program at nine a.m. Eastern Time on weekdays. Um, the new, the new partnership marks the first daily program since the conclusion of 106 and Park in 2014 and its first ever daytime show. The program will showcase interviews and segments from the radio show, which airs in over 90 markets throughout the nation. BET has, uh, been home of many cultural institutions like Rap City and 106 and Park. Um, that have shaped a generation. Charlemagne the God said these those shows laid the foundation for the Breakfast Club to stand and grow on into the cultural institution that we have become. We look forward to carrying on the tradition. I mean, that's good for them. Are they are they gonna get a new um are they gonna are they gonna um get somebody else to be on the show? Or is it just like a rotating chair? Because I know they I know they had Portia, Nene, Tamar, Ray J. Who else they have? They've had a few people. So are they just going to keep, are they just going to just, you know, again, just have a rotating chair, rotating guest? Are they going to find someone to fulfill, to fill that third spot? I think, I think they need to find somebody. I think, I think, I think they need to find somebody. I think it should be, I just think it should be another black girl, a black woman. I think it should be another black woman. I won't mind a gay guy, but that, that, that's, that's too much for I feel like that's too much for the Breakfast Club viewers. Um, they could probably do it like a lesbian. But yeah, I think it should definitely be another woman. Somebody who's entertaining and funny and not scared to speak up and not timid. Because Angela, you was too timid for me. Her new show actually don't sound... I mean, the clips that I've heard... Are we checking out Angela Yee's new show? I'm not. I'm asking y'all. <laughs> Ooh, child. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Girl, here they go. Here they go. All right, y'all. That's pretty much it. Oh, here we go. Lionel Richie reveals he only lasts 15 minutes in bed. Now, while discussing his hit song all night long, says, says now my all night long is down to a fierce 15 minutes. Lana, why don't you tell me all your business? All right. So it looks like Lionel Richie has become very candid about his sex life while discussing his hit song all night long during a joint interview with Katy Perry and Luke Bryan on The View. The 73 year old singer dove into the story behind the timeless tune, which turns 40 uh, this year. The singer revealed, when I wrote All Night Long, it was truly all night long. Now my all night long is down to a fierce 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, that's not 
half a 73 year old. He went on to say, but don't worry, we'll talk about that later. No, we won't. <laughs> if I was whooping, I would have said, no, we not. You should not already said too much anyways, girl. We did not. Koala just kept lying. We didn't need to know that. Um, Perry chimed in saying, 15 minutes, that's long, bud. And don't you forget that, and don't you forget that, all right? Rich responded to the singer. I mean, girl, you got some of the girls out here who 30 saying that girl, 15 minutes is, is enough for them. So, you know. For for 15 minutes for a 73 year old, I think that's <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a decent time. Y'all, y'all think that's decent? Y'all think that's a decent time? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a couple. That's a couple. You know, that's at least one Erica Badu song. You know what I'm saying? That's one Erica Badu song. That 15 minutes. That's about you know three or four songs. You know. You got a couple pumps. <laughs> you know? Anyways, y'all. I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.